something fun for the kids. So uh, kids at home, and those of you older home in your jammies too, you can too. Just, just don't hurt yourself doing this. This song uh, we learned from uh, David from uh, Cities Under Fire when they came down. It's an old Bethel song called Deep Cries Out. You ready, girls? All right. I've got a river of living water, a fountain that never will run dry. It's open heavens, you're releasing, we will never be denied. Cause we're stirring up deep, deep wells, we're stirring up deep, deep waters, we're gonna dance in the river, dance in the river. Cause we're stirring up deep, deep wells. We're stirring up deep, deep waters. We're gonna jump in the river. Jump in the river. The deep cries out to deep cries out to. The deep cries out to deep cries out to. So we cry out to, we cry out to you. Jesus, I've got a river living water. It's open heavens, you're releasing, we will never be denied. Cause we're stirring up deep, deep wells, we're stirring up deep, deep waters, we're gonna dance in the river, dance in the river. Cause we're stirring up deep, deep wells. We're stirring up deep, deep waters. We're gonna jump in the river. Jump in the river. The deep cries out to deep cries out to. The deep cries out to deep cries out to. So we cry out to, we cry out to you. Jesus, the deep cries out to. Deep cries out to the deep cries out to deep cries out to so we cry out to we cry out to you Jesus we're falling into deeper waters calling out to you we're walking. They'll go the opposite way here in the screen, so just follow them. You'll be all right. If he goes to the left, then we'll go to the left. If he goes to the right, then we'll go to the right. We're going to jump, 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 jump in the river. Jump, 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 everybody. If he goes to the left, then we'll go to the left. If he goes to the right, then we'll go to the right. We're going to dance, 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 dance in the river. Dance, 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 dance. If he goes to the left, then we'll go to the left. If he goes to the right, then we'll go to the right. We're going to jump, 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 jump in the river. Jump, 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 everybody. If he goes to the left, then we'll go to the left. If he goes to the right, then we'll go to the right. We're going to shout, 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 shout in the river. Shout, 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 shout. So we cry out to, we cry out to you, Jesus. The deep cries out to, deep cries out to, the deep cries out to, deep 
cries out to, so we cry out to, we cry out to you, Jesus. Awesome. Yeah, aren't they great? Uh, good stuff. Uh, we're going to do a, a, something I haven't done before uh, for worship, but it's a great worship song uh, by Jeremy Riddle. This is called The Lord is My Shepherd. Yeah. Hey. 
so much for worshiping with us this morning. Well, um, myself, I was born and raised in Fort Peck, Montana, um, so I was from this area. Um, kind of my spiritual path was, you know, I grew up in the Lutheran Church in Fort Peck and Nashua. Um, I went through confirmation through the Lutheran Church, but I think the biggest struggle when I was growing up is there was never a connection to him and that he was really a living God, and um, I never made that connection. I just never felt, and, and it was never really taught the impacts that he has in your day-to-day -day life. And I felt like it was more of a history lesson than it was uh, a real life lesson. Um, so yeah, I was born here and um, went off to college um, in Rapid City and that's where, where me, we met. Um, became friends, we were friends for a few years before we started dating. I did not grow up in a believing home or a Christian home. And so I had never heard about Jesus. Didn't know who he was, didn't know anything about him, didn't know. I'd heard the name Jesus, but that was as far as it went. I didn't know why he came, what he was about, didn't know that he died for my sins or anything like that. And so, um, yeah, we were just living our life. We were just kind of in the party scene, going to bars, then we, um, <clears throat> we moved to Wyoming. Inside, I started feeling like just a little bit of a pull to just kind of maybe search for God, like a little bit of a pull to just kind of check out churches. I can't even say why. I just feel like maybe God, I'm sure obviously God was like putting that prompt on there to just kind of seek his face a little bit. And, and um, Jed had a boss that was encouraging him to come to church. <laughs> he was inviting his, him constantly, and Jed was turning him down a lot. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Um, so I took a job in Wyoming, um, and Amy had another year in college, and so um, during the summer, she'd come live with me, um, and then when she graduated, she'd come and moved in with me, and um, it wasn't very long, um, but that I guess that whole time, my boss was just encouraged us to go to church or to come to his church, and I was like, nah. And I always felt like that same pull like Amy's talking about. Um, <clears throat> but um, I almost didn't want to go because he was asking me so much. It was so that much. Um, but it was it was okay. Um, but yeah, we just, the funny thing was, um, and I know it was God looking back on it, but um, we went to church together for the first time in Wyoming. We just decided to just naturally go to the church that he invited us to and we were like well we'll just try this out for one Sunday and then um, probably just church hop around and just see what one fits our little view of God and fits our lifestyle and what we want to do and um, that very first Sunday there was a couple an old couple older couple in the church and they invited us out to breakfast afterward and we were like what? Like, you don't even know us. Like, you were going to invite us to breakfast? We were just floored. Like, we just could not even believe that somebody would be so nice to us. And then they, they just, like, didn't even know us. And so then we kept going back. And we never, never, ever went to another church there in Wyoming. In yeah. And so it was just, like, amazing. It was just, like, this is where I want you. You just see God's handprints, like, all over it. Like, that's where he wanted us. And we, um met some other young couples that we became friends with and they invited us to their small group, which um, was just absolutely amazing. Like we just, um, they just really, really took us under their wing and just showed us like who God was and just helped us get into his word, helped us, just really taught us like from the basic level, like everything like about God and just, and just took us under and were just our friends. They were just great, great friends. Yeah, I think the biggest difference at that point was just, um, for me, was going from the, the background that I was at. I, you know, I knew a lot of the church stuff, but um, going to an actually a church that tried to make, um, you know, make you know that, that the Lord is alive, that Jesus is among us now, and he has an impact on us um, continually, and it's not a history lesson. And, um, you know, the members were so loving and so welcoming to us that um, it was infectious and you wanted to be there. Is when you have people that are 
excited to see you there on Sunday morning um, that are truly care about you, that truly want to have an in-depth relationship with you, um, you're going to be impacted. And um, that was the biggest thing that we found with that church. And then we got into a small group, and that was, you know, well, life-changing because it um, made us dive deeper into our own lives and, and look at our own you know, sinful natures. You know, we were living together, um, just newly engaged. Um, I remember even a time we started um, doing counseling, um, and you know, Mar- what, marriage counseling. Marriage counseling, <laughs> yeah. And um, and we were starting to be convicted of, um, you know, just seeing the sin in our lives of, you know, living together, and um, you know, so we we made a vow to be abstinent for the last part of that. Um, until we were our wedding day and um, and worked hard towards that but um, you know we would never have felt those things if if we wouldn't have had you know the life group and the friends um, I guess at that point that were guiding us and helping us along the way they weren't convicting us though it was no I mean it, it, yeah, was, the, it was the Holy, the Holy Spirit, Spirit working on us yeah the Holy Spirit that connection like working on us before I felt like we were so self-containing and self-sustaining um, that it was, you know, we didn't have to rely on him. We didn't have to depend on him for, you know. Financially. Financially or for, you know, the weather was bad. Who cares, you know. It didn't. We weren't as affected by as much. And so I think that took us out of truly knowing him and following him. Um, and then we were also, you know, separate as a family more and, I guess now is just looking at the journey that he's going to present before us now and see if we can be steadfast in it. If you weren't a believer, you would look at our life and probably be like, what are they doing? And we and we have gotten that. We have gotten like people like, you're moving where? You're quitting your well-paying job to do what? Like, and um, it's it's not up for them to to understand that. And sometimes it's not even up for us to understand. It's like, if God's calling you to do something, then you do it. And um, it's just taking that step of faith of like, are you going to trust me? Are you going to, do you really believe my promises? Do you really believe my truth? Like, um, and so getting to live that out in this way has been kind of neat. It's kind of a roller coaster at times, but um I, I mean, well, I think we always get into those routines where we have our own plans and our own agendas, and, and no matter what we do, especially when you're self-employed. But you just got to keep reminding yourself that he's in every activity, and he needs to be. And we always um, talk about um, trying to follow him continually and follow him on a not on a you know a yearly path or a long long-term program, but it, more on a every activity, every daily thing we're doing, every moment by moment if we can, and trying to be continually, um, you know, connected and, and obedient if we can. Um, and I'm not saying we're perfect in, in doing it right, but um, I think it's just that you're trying and, and trying to be more connected. And um, I guess that's where he's got us right now. Just, I mean, the whole process of salvation, of, of not knowing God and seeing that he's a, a loving God, it, I, I just thank you for that message because it just goes right along with what we're saying today. But before we do that, this is what I would like you guys as a church to do. Would you please, I know that you've already done it because it's already been, been done, but if there's somebody online that you haven't said hi to yet, hey, I'm going to give you about uh, the next 30 seconds to just say hi to other people Spend some time just going, hey, how you doing? Uh, because this is, uh, hey, this is just the time to be the church a little bit. So take 30 seconds to say hi to somebody.
All right, good job. <clears throat> I, I have to say that uh, this week when I was uh, preparing for this sermon, uh, I spend Mondays, um, all day Monday, trying to uh, just kind of wrap my brain around what's the next thing that we'll be preaching on and, uh, or the next sermon, even though sometimes I've got multiple sermons, and then Tuesday, kind of polish it up and give it to my preaching team. And I have to admit, Monday I got into the office and I just thought, man, Sunday was so amazing, Easter, and, and how do you follow that up? And um, I have to admit that I began to just kind of think, what's, what's the use? Um, I'm supposed to be a pastor who gives hope and tells you guys, hey, uh, let's pick a sermon on hope, and I knew that I didn't want to preach a sermon on hope. You, you guys have seen plenty of posts. Uh, you've been talking to each other about, hey, we'll get through this. But then I began to uh, kind of go through Monday and Tuesday, and I didn't have a sermon prepared. And, uh, and then Wednesday rolls along, and I'm still trying to figure out what do I talk about. And knowing that, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm just sitting there trying to keep myself busy, maybe doing some things around the church, cleaning up after the Easter things and so, some of my mind. And, and I'll have to admit, even uh, I, I get to Wednesday night and I go home and I'm just like, I am wasting my time. I, I still have nothing. And so then I put my kids to bed on uh, Wednesday night and uh, I was just praying and and God kind of was just kind of like, why do you think anything has changed in my relationship with you? And so I began just kind of processing that a little bit and kind of going, wait a second, it, it doesn't change. Our circumstances might change, but our relationship with God doesn't. We, we have a relationship with God. And I just began to start thinking about, hey, so what does that mean in a time like this? Because I have to admit to you guys that I, I'm a people person. I've told you guys that I'm not a huge hugging person, but I, I am a people person. I, I love to see people. And when I preach out to something like this where I have a crowd of maybe three people sitting here, I mean, they've, they've joked about putting cardboard boxes up, but they haven't done it yet. So if you send your pictures in, you can. Um, But it's been rough. It's been hard for me to kind of just kind of go, all right, what, how? How do we do this and, and where do we go? And there's been times where I, I see other people in our church just kind of pick me up. And I finally had a preaching team meeting with my group on Thursday. And we kind of lined out where we're going for the next four weeks and kind of just going, hey, we're going to start getting back to the basics. And today might be a sermon in which you could probably take all of my sermons in the last little bit and combine them and say, this is really what it's all about, but I, I think we all need a little bit of reminder this morning. And as I was scrolling through some of my Instagram stuff, I came across three stories that I thought was incredibly interesting in terms of how we walk with God a little bit. And that first story is, is this, and it, I, I kind of follow this kind of, hey, what if we shift our mindset a little bit? And the first story I came across was there was once all these villagers of a town who decided to come together and pray for rain because they had been in a drought for a really long time. And when the day came and the whole village came together and gathered to pray, and only one boy brought an umbrella total mindset difference. If we're going to pray for something, are we expecting God to do something? And that is what is called faith. It's not just doing something in action. And then we get all, we, I, I came across another story that says, hey, when we toss our small toddlers into the air, they laugh because they will know that we will catch them. And that is what, what, uh, what I would call joy, because joy is not based on the fun in the moment. Actually, I think joy is based on who the character of dad is and, and the ability to catch their own child. And I know some of you are dads, like I tried that once, I dropped my kids. Hey, we all turned out great, didn't we, dad? All right, he dropped me on my head a couple times probably. But uh, hey, I, I think the joy is not so much in 
the fact that we get to do something fun, but the joy in the fact of the goodness of who God is. And then the last story I heard, every night when we go to bed, we have no assurance of waking up, do we? We, we have no assurance that we're going to wake up in the morning, but how many of you, like me, still set our alarm for tomorrow? And that's what, what we really call hope. Like if we kind of look at that, we do know that we're going to wake up because there is hope for the next day. You see, the, the whole point is that I, I'm trying to get to is this, is that the mission of the church has not changed even if the situation has. Our church mission is not different. Our relationship with God, you are the church. The church isn't this building. The church is you. The church is inviting people just like Judd and Amy got invited to church, inviting people into relationships, sharing relationship, your relationship of God with one another. It doesn't change just because we can't be together. And yet for some reason we take these situations and we kind of just allow it to allow it to be completely different for us we all of a sudden have all the time in the world and yet we don't read the bible more we have all the time in the world to sit and finally play a game with our kids and we mindlessly scroll through facebook seeing what other people are doing we have an opportunity to really give joy to our neighbors but we don't reach out to them we just watch them walk on by because, of course, we need to be in our homes. We don't maybe call them up and say, hey, how are you doing? Anything you need. And there are some of you that I know are doing that, and good job, great job. But I think that I maybe just want to give a little bit of encouragement in, in this time where we don't know how much longer. Some of us, as we were getting together this morning, we're like, hey, maybe just one more week. Maybe next week we can get together and maybe we can like move all these rows of chairs and your family gets, you know, your family only gets three chairs because we have to, you know, be six feet apart. I, I mean, all these different things that go in my mind, but I want to give a little bit of encouragement today to to just go, man, let's take over every opportunity. Let's change our mindset. The things that we weren't normally able to do, we get to do now. We get to come closer to Jesus. We get to hear his heart. I mean, I've heard some churches, and we've been kind of watching, we've been, uh, we, I've been going through, uh, hey, just what, um, YouTube channels and different kind of Instagram stories of what other pastors, other, other churches are doing. And it's, and it's really interesting that some of the churches that I've looked at, they're, they're suggesting that they might be doing this until September. September, y'all. Like, that's, that's crazy. I don't think that's going to happen for us, just to let you know, but that's the reality for some churches in large areas. They might not be getting back to it so soon. And who knows, like, when we, when we get closer to God, what if he's the one that gives us fantastic ideas and ways in which we, can, which we can come back together? I'm just here to remind us that the mission of the church hasn't changed. We want to grow in our relationship with Christ, even though the situation around us has. And it's going to. We live in a world where situations change so quickly, but we have to come back to the very basics of, yes, Let's be reminded of this. I was reading John 10.10 10, uh, this week, and it says this. It says, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. But my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Jesus' words right here. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. There are some of you right now that go, yeah, right, a rich and satisfying life. I don't feel like I'm doing that right now. I'm not living my best life now, Seth Runner. But we have to remember the purpose of the evil one is to steal, kill, and destroy. And we're not going to let him steal our joy once we understand the foundations of Jesus for us. His purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. So I'm asking you, where's your heart today? Are you looking at it at a moment to go, man, I am living a satisfied life. 
Or if I'm not, what do I need to do a little bit differently? What mindset do I need to switch? What prayers do I need to do differently? And we're, we're going to get into that in just a little bit. But for those of you who don't see life as abundant right now, I encourage you, let's, let's press into God just a little bit more together. And we're, we're going to talk about that. But I was reminded of one of my favorite stories. There's, there's really two favorite stories in the Bible for me. The woman caught in adultery and the woman who, uh, who meets Jesus at the well. And I find it interesting that we sung those two songs. And I, I met with Tim on Tuesday. And I was like, sorry, man, I, got, I don't got anything for you. So you're going to have to pick the songs out of the air. And the two songs that he, actually the three songs that he picks, um, men are are all about this idea of living water, that Jesus is our living water. And so Jesus goes to this well, and he meets this woman there, and he just tells her her whole life story. And then all of a sudden she says, I see that you're a prophet. I see that you're a wise person. And then she goes on to say, hey, can you please tell me where we should be worshiping? Because the Jews say we have to worship here, but us Gentiles, we worship here and, and we think that this is a good spot. Would you tell us the right place to worship? And he responds to them in, um, in verse 21. He says, believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship, while we Jews know all about them, for salvation comes to the Jews. But the time is coming, indeed, it's here now, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. And I'm not going to go into the whole detail of spirit and truth but what I am getting at is this, is are you worshiping God wherever you are? Whether it's at home or whether it's just getting out of home and driving in the car, are you finding time to worship God? Sundays don't look the same, and some of you guys maybe spent Sundays going, this is my time where I can get refueled, but I'm telling you, man, you have a chance every single day. You have a chance to worship God in the fullness of who he is and thank him for, for what he has for you. I was talking to a lady on the phone and I was just asking her, I was just saying, are you doing okay? Are you doing all right? Is there anything that we can help you out with? And she said this, she said this to me this week. She said, thank goodness I have Christ, Seth. And all the other things that are going on, she said, I'm just so worried about the people who don't. She said, I can take this because I have a relationship with him and I know what's going on. I know that God holds the future. I know that Jesus Christ has forgiven me of my sins. I can bank on the truth of who he is. I can have faith in him because, guess what, he hears my prayers. I can have joy in him because I have assurance of who he is. And my hope is ultimately in him because it is not about this life, but it is about eternity with him. Thank goodness I have Christ, she says. And so I want to give four scriptures this week and, and maybe four things in which we can kind of come to, uh, to this week going, God, I, I'm not going to be stuck in my, oh my goodness, what's going on? I, I don't know these things. And so here's, here's the four things that I want us to do as a church, even though... Um, even though the circumstances are different, this is the mission of the church. We, we haven't changed. And the first thing is this, is we seek God as a church. We seek God. No matter, no matter what's going on, we seek him. That is, that is the baseline, that is the foundation of what we're looking at. We want to not just be sitting on a couch going, okay, I'm just going to wait for this to get, all get over so I can go back to normalcy. No, I have an opportunity to seek God like none else. Matthew 6.33 is literally my life verse, and I got to share it this week on uh, some girls' Instagram uh, videos, and it was really fun to do with them, and they asked me what my favorite verse was, and Matthew 6.33 is my favorite verse. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and live righteously, 
and he will give you everything you need. I mean, it's right there in everything that we're doing. And, and even as a pastor, I can't believe that I, I just got into this loop of just going, what's going on? But here, here it is. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. He goes on to talk to the woman at the well. He says, the kingdom of God is here. I'm here. And she goes, I know the Messiah is going to tell us. And he's like, I'm the Messiah. He is here. He's, he's encouraging us that it's here now. It's not a later thing. Seek the kingdom of God above else. And live, live it, which we're going to get to in just a second. And he will give you everything you need. Everything you need. In the circumstances that change, God still gives us everything we need. The second thing, mission of the church that doesn't change is we listen. We, sorry, we spend time with him. We spend time with God. We, we listen to him. When we spend time with him, we are actively engaging in a relationship with him. It's not that we just seek him to get the answers or to get what we want. No, we spend time with him to go, man, I want to listen to your voice. I want to be quiet enough. I don't, I don't want to have distractions. In fact, actually, Psalms 1, 1 through 3 says this. It says, oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. Here's the deal right here. Here's the kicker. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They listen to the law of God. As they're reading, they're listening, and they're actively going, God, give me more. They are just like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they will prosper in all they do. In the moments in which we can listen to God, He's preparing our hearts to, is to produce the fruit that we need. Are we listening to God? Are we, or are we just simply telling him what we want? The next thing that we, the mission of the church that never changes is, hey, we pray to him. We pray. We're spending time in prayer with him. You guys will remember a couple weeks back that I, in fact, actually kind of took apart Matthew 6, 9 through 13, but I just want to read it with you. It says this, pray like this, our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy, may your kingdom come soon, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation but rescue us from the evil one. After we've listened to God, we simply pour out our hearts to God and we say, God, okay, I'm going to trust you. I know that you're holy. I know that you've got everything taken care of. God, here's what I need from you. Here's what my heart desires after listening to you. And the last thing is probably one of the most important things to, to me that I feel like I might have lost a little bit in this whole situation, circumstance, change. I say that five times fast. Situation, circumstance, change. The, the last one is this, is we stay focused. In the midst of all of the things going around us, we want to stay focused. In fact, actually, there's an incredible verse in Titus chapter 3, verses 3 through 7, that says this right here. Once we, too, were foolish and disobedient. We were misled and became slaves to many lusts and pleasures, the things that constantly pull us away. Our lives were full of evil and envy, and we hated each other. But here's the kicker, when we want to stay focused, but when God our Savior revealed his kindness and love, he saved us not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and a new life through the Holy Spirit. He generously poured out the Spirit upon us through Jesus Christ our Savior. 
because of his grace, he declares us righteous and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. Staying focused means that no matter what goes on, we can look at this and we can go, this is what I was like and now, because of Christ, I follow him. And it's because of the confidence that we will inherit eternal life. Here's the deal, in, in a moment like this, a lot of us wonder, man, where, really? Eternal life, is, is that really it? I, I kind of want to hold on to my own life. There are some of us that don't have that assurance in this world. We look at this abundant life that Christ has given us and we're sitting there going, I don't understand it. And I don't think we will until we get to the point of going, no, I want assurance of eternal life. I want assurance that my life isn't just about now, but it's about later. It's about future things. So this is what I... In Titus 3, 3 through 7, I, I want to get to. I want us all to come back to the basics and remember this. Because when we realize this, I think it's going to push us forward to the next couple of weeks to see where God is leading our church and going back to the basics of who is God, who is Jesus, what's the Holy Spirit, what is this Bible thing all about? Because, man, I don't want us to get lost in the future of going, I have, I have nothing to lean back on or I have no hope. And so this is the, the foundation for us believers. And if you don't believe this yet, hear me out. I, I want to give you the opportunity to say, this is what life is all about. You see, all of us have sinned. If unforgiven, that sin separates us from God for eternity. But God loved the world so much that he gave his son so that any one of us who believe in him will never perish but have eternal life. Jesus, God in the flesh, he came as one of us, modeled a perfect life for us, died because of us, and he rose victorious so that any one of us, by faith in him, could be forgiven of our sins, given a new life today, not later, but today. Our lives given power to live for him, to honor him every single day. And one day we will spend eternity with him. And so if you've never put your faith in Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins, you, you can do that right now. You don't need to wait for a later date. You don't need to have the perfect spot. You don't need to be having uh, everything perfect around you. You can do it in your PJs. You can pray with me in just a second, but here's what I need you to know is that prayer doesn't save you. Jesus saves you. Your prayer is an expression of your faith in Jesus. And so all of us around here, even those of you who have believed for thousands of years, would you just pray this prayer with me? Because let's start getting back to, hey, let's refocus ourselves. Let's change our mindset again and get back to seeking God. of spending time with him, about praying to him, and about staying focused on those things. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. Lord, would you forgive me of my wicked ways? Lord, I have made it about me for a really long time. And I want you, the alive, living God, to be present in my life. And so, Lord, would you help me to turn from my ways and trust your ways? Lord, lead me not into temptation, but lead me in your path. In your holy name I pray. And Lord, would you, would you just as, as a church body who wants to follow you, Lord, would you 
Would you help us to not get stuck this week? Would you help us to push through where we need to push through? Would you, would you help us to be drawn to you? Would your Holy Spirit draw us closer to you? And would we, like the testimony of Jed and Amy says, would, would you just help us to trust you in whatever endeavor we have? Lord, we desire you to be the Lord of our lives. God, we love you and we praise you. In your holy name we pray, amen. Hey, once again, if you're interested in uh, secret church that is this Friday, September 24th. If you guys would like to be a part of that, just please sign up for that. Uh, send us a message so that we can get some books to you and the material to you. Hey, if you're worried about start times, you can start it at a later time. It's, it's a great opportunity for you to be able to do that this weekend, Friday the 24th. And so, uh, hey, we'll see you all later. Love you. Have a great Sunday. Bye. Bye.